In this video, we're going to continue our conversation related to the time value of money. We're going to focus in this video on present value. So in the previous video, we talked about um, the future value and how we can use Excel to calculate. If we have a known amount today, we can calculate what the future value of that amount is going to be with different assumptions in terms of compounding periods and interest rates. Um, so now talking about present value. So this is where we have a target for what we want in the future. So we have a future amount. What we don't know is what is the current, the present equivalent of that future amount. So in this instance, what we're going to do again is use Excel to calculate and we're going to take on this scenario. If we wanted to have $1,000 three years from now, how much would we need to set aside and invest today, assuming that we could earn 10% interest uh, compounded annually? So if I jump into my Excel spreadsheet under the PV um, tab, what you'll see is that again, we could have gone through the process of, of um, do, doing a, a big table to kind of calculate what the present value would be, but instead we can use um, the formulas in Excel. So under the financial tab, uh, well, first of all, under the formulas menu, under the financial tab, you can see again, there's a laundry list of different financial um, formulas that we can use, but the one that we're gonna be looking for is PV. So we'll just get used to this over time because we're gonna be using these formulas in the upcoming chapters for intermediate um, accounting. So the formula that we use to calculate a the present value of a future dollar is going to be equals PV. We click on the PV, and again, Excel prompts us with what it is that we need to um, include in this formula. So the rate that we're going to assume is 10%. It's an annual interest rate, so our number of periods, that's not number of years. Remember, it's number of compounding periods. So we have three years, and we're co going to compound one time per year. At the end of each year, we will compound that interest. So um, it's three compounding periods. We don't have a payment amount in this case. What we're talking about is one future value that we're looking um, towards um, sort of figuring out what the present equivalent of that future amount is. So our future value is going to be $1,000 and our type is going to be zero. If we put that information in, what we can see is that Excel tells us that the present value of that future amount is $751.31. And notice in the context of this problem, right, again, we said every time we put these um, amounts into Excel, Excel wants a cash inflow and a cash outflow. So what we assumed in the formula was that our future value, which was $1,000, our future value is what our cash outflow is going to be. That's our positive amount. That's the amount that we want to have and be able to take out of this investment account three years from now. That's our that's our future value. So what Excel is now telling us or what these formulas are telling us is that if we want to grow to $1,000 three years from now, assuming that we have um, the ability to earn 10% interest and compound annually, we would have to put in to this investment account $751 today. If we did that, it would grow to $1,000 three years into the future. And so this timeline on the next slide kind of gives us a good understanding of what we're talking about and the relationship between present value and future value. So again, future value was discussed on the previous lecture, present value being discussed here, where the future value uh, requires the addition of compounded interest, whereas the present value requires us to remove that compounded interest. So again, in the problem that we were trying to go through here with the present value of a single amount, what we were trying to accomplish is basically to figure out, okay, if we want $1,000 in the future, let's take out all the interest that we would be able to earn over that three-year period, and let's figure out what is the lump sum that we need to set aside in this investment account on day one today, um, the, that present value, so that it would accumulate enough interest to get up to the $1,000 future value that we want. So again, looking at these in terms of um, a timeline is kind of a good way to sort of understand where we're going. This present value calculation in particular is going to be important. Um, and, and just generally, the present value calculations are going to be important because, again, as I mentioned in the first video, the purpose of um, us getting an understanding of how to do these calculations is that uh, generally accepted accounting principles require us to calculate the present value of any future um, cash flows that we're going to have related to long-term liabilities. So let's think about an example for here for, for one minute. Let's say that... <clears throat> 
<clears throat> we have um, a long-term liability that is going to um, um, require us to pay periodic interest payments over a given period of time, as well as one final cash outflow um, at the end of the period. Let's say that that period is five years, so that um, just again to, to create this example in our head. So today, right, is when we actually have to report this liability on our accounting records. But the liability is all related to future cash flows. There are future periodic interest payments that we have to make over the period of time. And then there's one future, so these are periodic interest. And then there's one future cash flow of periodic, or I'm sorry, um, future outflow of cash to pay off the long-term liability, right? And so what generally accepted accounting principles says is that, okay, it's good that you know what the periodic interest payment is, and it's good that you know what the total future outflow is, but what's not good is that those are all in future dollars, and we need to know how much is that all worth today. So that's where these um, present value calculations are going to come into play. We don't know the present value. All we know is the future amounts. And so we need to perform these calculations so that we can get an understanding of what is the present value, today's dollars, what is the present value of those future cash flows because according to generally accepted accounting principles, all of these long-term liabilities that we're going to be talking about in future chapters, we're going to talk about bonds, which is going to look very similar Similar to this timeline here, we're going to look at bonds in chapter 14, we're going to look at leases in chapter 15, and we're going to look at pension um, plans in chapter 17. All three of those represent long-term liabilities for an organization. And what GAAP tells us is that those long-term liabilities have to be reported at the present value of those future cash flows. So that's where these the, the this tab, this present value tab in particular, is going to be of importance is because we're going to have to do these present value calculations as we think about how to value these different long-term liabilities. Okay, so in addition to just looking at singular amounts, um, we can also look at um, utilizing these future value and present value calculations as it relates to annuities. So I'm gonna introduce annuities in this video and then we're gonna pick up with the calculations um, in Excel in the next video. But just get a basic understanding of annuities um, here. Um, essentially, an annuity is going to be a series of consistent cash flows that are either received or paid over a given period of time. So I just gave an example in that Excel spreadsheet timeline, right? Periodic interest payments that we have to make um, as it relates to either a, a long-term note or a long-term bond, again, both of which we'll discuss in Chapter 14, those periodic payments that we have to make are annuity payments. And again, those are all future cash flows. Those are all payments that we make out into the future. So what generally accepted accounting principles says is that we have to do a calculation to bring those annuities, those future annuities, those future payments, back to the present value. And again, that's what we're going to learn about in the third and final um, video for Chapter 5. Um, one thing to keep in mind as we're, as we're um, going through the calculations in the upcoming video is that we have a choice in terms of the period of time or the date on, on which we have to make the payment. So we have um, two different types of annuities. We have an ordinary annuity and an annuity due. An ordinary due annuity is very simply where we make that periodic payment or we receive that periodic payment at the end of every period. An annuity due is where we make that payment or receive that payment at the beginning of each period. So we just have to read the details of the information given to us in each of the problems to understand whether or not we have an ordinary annuity or an annuity due. Now, when it comes to the calculation, I'll show in the third um, video for chapter five that all that this is going to relate to in our Excel calculations is gonna be the type. 
So in each calculation that we've done so far, the very last thing that Excel asks us for is the type. And now, if uh, previously when we were just talking about singular cash flow amounts, we weren't talking about periodic payments, we were talking about just one lump sum amount, the type was always zero because we weren't um, referring to anything related to these annuities. Now that we're gonna be talking about these annuities, type is gonna come into play in the calculation. If we have an ordinary annuity, in our formula, the type is going to be zero. If we have an annuity due, in our formula, the type is going to be one. Those are our only choices, either zero or one. So if you have an ordinary annuity, we're gonna put zero in the formula. If we have an annuity due, we're gonna put a one in the formula when they ask us for type. So again, this is just an introduction of basic annuities so that we can carry this understanding into the next uh, video where we actually start walking through the calculations um, for how to do future value and present value calculations as it relates to these annuities.